Hey there everyone, this is Lucky7DX, welcome to Let's Play Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story! Man, it feels so good to be able to say that finally. I've been looking forward to this game for so long! And now we are inside Bowser, he has inhaled everyone last episode, thanks to Fawful's evil plot, and now we're inside him, um, which is... You know, this just seems to be a very common scenario, you know, Mar uh, Superstar Saga, you know, they went inside Balletta, and, uh, Super and Partners in Time, they went inside you, but now this entire game is just like, well, we're just gonna put, we, you know, we like apparently putting characters inside other characters, so we're just gonna put everyone inside Bowser this time and just call it a plot. But, um, as you can see, Bowser's, um, from now on, Bowser's going to be on the top screen, and Mario and Luigi will always be playing the bottom screen, um, and the really cool thing that I like about Bowser's Inside Story is that, um, whenever you're inside Bowser, all the stages inside Bowser, um, they're always gonna be 2D platforming, as you can see right now. So, um, there's, there's like 2D platforming segments like this, and then there'll be like, you know, the 3D platforming segments in the overworld that will have a Bowser, and, um, at some point, uh, Mario and Luigi as well will have some few, uh, 3D platforming segments. But, um, that's pretty cool too, the whole t 2D platforming aspect of it. I like how they mix things up like that. Um, but yeah, Bowser's gonna be our top screen. I've already put him off by now. Um, we're just, well, I'll put him back on there whenever it's significant, because for, for now, he's dead, and that's rather unfortunate. But, um, what we're talking about now, basically, our save points inside Bowser will be these things called Globin, or Emo Globin, to be more precise, which are going to be our little helper characters inside Bowser, and I love these things. They're all like, Globin, 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 want to save your Globin? They hit... They're very quirky characters. I think they're pretty cool. Um, what's next? Let's find out, then. Uh, so we're in the trash pit currently. That's actually our current location. Uh, rather unfortunate that a place in type called, inside Bowser would be called the trash pit, but we found Starlo and something is attacking her. And that's actually the moment where we realize she's a girl. She's like, that's not how you treat a lady. Yeah, I guess that means Starlo's a girl after all. I don't know, you never could tell. Those guy star spirits tend to have yeah. pretty high-pitched sound effects as well, so who knows? Um, but we're just basically um, learning a few things. It's another emo globin! Yay! Emo globins! I love these characters so much, they make me so happy. Uh, remember or be forever globin. See ya, globin. I love those guys. And we can press down to go into pipes. I mean, this is just very typical. It's very... I mean, it's not as fi um, finessed as usual on uh, Mario platforming. This is by no means uh, to do Super Mario Bros. But um, it's it's still pretty good platforming. Uh, it's, it's still your basic Mario platforming. It's all the basics. So, you know, go down to pipes, you know, crazy stuff like that. It's just that instead of fighting things by jumping on them, you jump on them and then you fight them into an RPG battle. So that's how it works, I guess. Uh, but the Trash Pit's going to be our basic tutorial sort of stage in terms of, you know, it's like, it's like a... What was the name of that of the mountain? Uh, it's it's all it's like Bowser's airship um, in Superstar Saga or uh, what was it in Partners in Time? Is that first area of all the mushrooms? I forget. Like the the Christmassy looking place. Um, so it's your basic you know sort of tutorial area I suppose. And as usual, we fight Goomba looking things. They have like Shroob Goombas. They have like regular Goombas, and now they have like uh, whatever these things are called. They're they're like Goomba ish. Like, uh, what are the things that look like cells? They're like Goomba cells. They're like the white blood cells, except they're Goombas. I don't know. Just weird stuff like that. So, we're gonna be fighting some Goombas. Um, as usual in battle, you can see your health down there. Just basic things that, um, Stiles explained. We saw a lot of these last time. Um, we could also use access items as usual and use that. Um, you know, access mushrooms and stuff like that. So, uh, not gonna really bother about that now. The other command that, um, Stiles is gonna go over right now. You can also run from battle, but you'll lose coins if you do that, um, as with all the other games, so in general I'm going to try not to run. Um, like I did for Superstar and Saga, I had partners in time. Um, I'm going to be cutting out battles that are repeat, or, the, or there's anything really new. Um, but at, at this, and I'm going to be avoiding as many battles as I can, really, for the most part. Well, I won't avoid, avoid all of them. I'll at least show off enemy, each enemy at least once. and. Um, but I'm going to try to avoid as many repeat battles as I can. It seems to strike a good balance, you know, you get enough experience to, you know, be at a comfortable position, but it's not so much where you're overleveled and everything's just ridiculously easy. I still would like to keep this game to be somewhat of a challenge, so... Um, it's gonna be very similar to how I did Superstar Saga on Partners of Time, if you guys have watched that already. If you haven't, maybe you should, because, you know, then you'd be caught up on the whole plot of the story. But, uh, the nice thing with the, the uh, Mario & Luigi games are the plots are, for the most part, you know, besides a few references, like, you know, Fawful. Um, they are pretty independent of each other, so that's always good. Anyway, so now we have Starla with us. Like I said, she'll be our little helper. Um, she'll be our voice, like stuff what was, for the most part. Uh, there's a save point there, not really worried about it. Um, you know, yeah, I'm just gonna cut that one like I saw, because we've already fought those guys. They're, there's really nothing special. You just, I mean, you can counterattack them. That's really all we need to know. Um, nothing up here besides another guy. Um, I meant to dodge, and I end up getting a first strike, so that's what a first strike looks like. Um, if you uh, jump on them, this is actually something that's going to be explained later, but if you jump on an enemy, 
Um, you can get early damage onto them before the battle begins. Very handy tactic. Um, always a good idea to be able to do that. Um, obviously, quest direct things will have items and coins in them, which we will need to buy stuff, so we'll be doing that later. And I just juke the hell out of that Goomba. Uh, this Globa, this Globa, this Globa, this Globin, um, is a healing one, so if you ever find an orange one like that, it'll heal your S uh, your HP and your SP uh, fully, so that's always good. Uh, SP, obviously, um, unlike Partners in Time, there's actually, um, they got rid of the bro items. They brought back actual bro attacks again, like they did in Superstar Saga, although they still are very reminiscent to the ones in Partners in Time. Um, they still are kind of item-ish, but um, they use SP instead of actual items, so you don't, have to, you don't have to buy bro attacks this time. You actually will have them. And Luigi, what are you doing hanging around here? The, I don't, I'm not sure how I feel about Mario's voice clip for Luigi. His whole, like, Luigi thing. Like, it, it seems so strained. Like, I'm not sure if uh, Charles Martinet is the one who voices. I think he is still. But, I don't know. It, it just sounds very different from Mario. It sounds like a bit of a different voice clip. Well, that one sounds a bit more like the usual Mario. I don't know. I guess there are a few different voice clips. Luigi sounds the same. It's Mario who sounds a little bit funky. And, of course, Luigi crying. They have a giant, awesome, touching bro reunion here. But as usual, um, we're going to have to learn how to fight as a team now. And also, this is going to really explain first strikes. So you jump on them, and you do damage. I mean, that's pretty much, we've already seen that before. So uh, don't really need to explain that any more than that. Um, all we need, really need to know is Luigi can dodge using um, B. And also, we're going to get a little bit of explanation um, about basically how enemies work. So um, it's pretty similar to how Superstar Saga partners in time work in that enemies will choreograph their attacks. Like, you'll be able to tell which brother, if, as long as you know them decently, you'll be able to tell which brother they're attacking. That one I completely failed, actually, but um, if they're leaning downward like that, um, depending on which foot they raise, if they raise their right foot, they'll be attacking Mario. If they raise their left foot, they'll be attacking Luigi. And Stella's actually going to explain that right now, that's right now, which I guess I got a little bit ahead of myself. But yeah, um, we're just basically getting back into typical, you know, Mario and Luigi form. So uh, nothing too special to really, wor really worry about. Um, I mean, it's just your basic tutorial kind of stuff. So we're, we're back here just playing more Goombas, just, I don't know, there's not what else is there really to talk about this about this tutorial. I already explained how the basic combat works. Um, Luigi, I, I, like I said, the, the voices are a bit different. Uh, Luigi can counterattack using B, right? It's just nothing different. I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about the voices. I do like um, Bowser's, though. Bowser's voice um, could be very interesting, as you can see. Uh, Mario's the only one that seems a bit strained, so um, if anyone knows if Charles Martin is actually a part of this, I actually haven't looked that up yet. Um, I guess you can leave that in the comments below. I don't know. It's not really even that big of a deal. I don't care that much. What I do care about is that it is a fun game, so we're just going to quickly finish off these Goombas. Stello is done with the really gory tutorials. I guess I really didn't need it to do the tutorials, but I figured it'd be good to have them on screen just in case I'm sort of confusing as well. Uh, Luigi obviously can also do a double jump, just B and B as usual. Let me get mushrooms for being enemies. Um, of course, you can always get items for being enemies. I think that's the first instance that we've had. But yeah. I mean, I do... Stello, you just hurt Luigi! Luigi's, of course, just always angry about stuff. Luigi, you need to keep your temper under control. Do you remember the instance back in Partners in Time where people were like, Your heart is dirtied. Except that was all a ruse, but that's okay. We're just getting back into past games that no one cares about. Uh, Stella's going to quickly explain us the star menu, which is good because, you know, menus probably a good thing to have in RPGs in general. Um, a bit, I kind of like this menu a bit better than the suitcase. The suitcase seemed a little bit cluttered. This one's just pretty simple. You have your items, uh, nothing, not a big deal. You have your gear, um, which the gear in this game is like... What's going to happen is, as we level up, um, we're going to get ranks, which you saw those ranks over the, inf inf the info screen. Where you're feeling, I'll, I'm going to go over the info screen a bit more thoroughly in a little bit. Um, we spent 24 minutes so far. That seems about accurate, actually. Um, and, of course, you can see your coins, your health. And it's just your basic menu sort of screen. Um, but basically, as you rank up, um, as you get levels, you go up in rank. And as you do that, you'll actually be able to get more item slots, which is a really cool mechanic of this game. Um, so, And then you'll also have different types of items. You'll have pants, you'll have you know, the usual sort of pants, items uh, you'll have you'll get socks you'll get gloves you'll get like other kinds of items so eventually you can have like four I think it's I forget it's four or five different items on Mario and Luigi I um, mean the same will go for Bowser as well I think he can only get to three but he's gonna have a bunch of variety of items to equip too so um, the, the whole item system is a bit more um, complex in this game than it is in past games which is really nice so you can I mean you can get a bunch of different sort of items on all your characters and then you know increase you know there are a bunch of different stats at once and you know make some interesting combinations um, you just get a little more variety in terms of like, you know, customizing your characters and giving them, um, especially when it comes to Mario and Luigi, you know, as usual, I try to make Mario the uh, more offensive character and Luigi the more tanky sort of character. Um, so we'll be, we'll be able to specialize the roles even better in this game, which is kind of cool. Um, 
Bowser is just sort of Bowser. Um, as you're gonna see once we compare the stats of once we get Bowser, uh, his stats are just generally like a lot higher than uh, Mario and Luigi's, just because he's like a solo character, so he's only playing by himself. So um, he generally, ha I mean, which of course, I mean, he's a bit more bulky, he's a bit more powerful, but at the same time, you know, if he ever dies, it's game over. So um, that's basically how Bowser tends to work in general. Uh, the map. You press select, you exit the map. Um, really, the maps in this game is definitely one of the weaker points because it's a bit confusing, and in general, it doesn't really help. So I'm gonna not really shut off the map that much. I don't. Really, I never really thought the maps really were that beneficial. They're sort of more confusing than they are helpful. A uh, quick run over through of the stats. HP is pretty uh, self-explanatory. SP will be uh, you know how we use our special attacks. Uh, attack and defense pretty obvious. Speed will be who goes gets to go first in battle. And stash um. Stash is always kind of different in every game. Um, it still is how much, how often lucky hits, you know, critical hits will happen. I'm pretty sure we've seen some critical hits already at, at this point. Um, you can see basically, you know, Mario. They can kind of compare the stats there. Mario has a little more, more power, um, speed, and Luigi has a bit more HP and defense and stash. Which I don't know why Luigi is given the bigger stash in all these games, but it's apparently how it works. Um, but stash will do that. And it'll also, um, there's going to be it, it determines your luck in a certain mechanic we're going to find later in the game involving scratch cards in the shops. Which um, will, will be how you save money. I don't think it makes anything less expensive in this game, unlike other games where Stash made things less expensive. Um, I think it just will increase the odds that you actually get to save money uh, through these, this whole scratch card system, which we'll see later. Anyways, we get a little tiny lecture on uh, how to move together as a team. Really nothing too special. I mean, A and B, if you're jumping off left ledges, you just press A and B at the same time in order to jump over things. It's really not that much. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. And if you guys have seen any of my past uh, Mario and Luigi LPs, I mean, you'll know what I'm talking about instantly. So, uh, not gonna really worry too much about that. Uh, I think, is there an item up here? There is. Uh, it's more mushrooms. That's always good. I think mushrooms heal 20. You know, I think it's 30 HP. I think it's 20 or 30 HP. So, there's that. We got a syrup jar not too long ago, which will heal, um, which will give us more SP. Which we're going to be getting our special attacks pretty soon. I think actually maybe in this episode we might pick up the first one. Um, so you'll see how those work soon enough. As you see, if you, if you follow those, uh, the gooey stuff, it'll actually just send you to a pipe uh, backwards, uh, back there a little bit. So uh, he feels joy and, and deep globin. Yes, globin. It's now an emotion. I feel quite globin-y today. Uh, sorry these episodes are just a tiny bit boring for now, but um, it's not really like, much is happening because it's sort of tutorial sort of stuff. I mean, you guys have pr pretty much expected that. You know, RPG ch tends to be pretty heavy on tutorials early in the game. But this game will pick up really soon, um, and things are going to get really good. Probably even by next episode, things will be getting pretty interesting. Uh, that platform, you just alternate between A and B to get up there. Nothing too special. And I see myself some hammers. This game, I mean... Every Mario and Luigi game has hammers, and luckily this time it's not the babies only who get to have it. Mario and Luigi get their own hammers. Why they don't have hammers all the time? I mean, they get like a new hammer every single game. Like every Paper Mario game, Mario gets a new hammer. Every Mario RPG, Mario gets a new hammer. So how many hammers does he have? He is like he, he must be like a hammer collector. He just has like tons and tons of hammers. But here we get introduced to a new mechanic: um, the attack pieces. Basically. This is how we're going to be getting our special attacks. You have to collect 10 attack pieces in an area, and you'll be able, like each area will have their own set of attack pieces. And you'll once you get the 10 attack pieces, you'll be able to use a new special attack. So um, that's basically how it works. Uh, and so they, there's actually a lot of special attacks in this game. I like the special attacks in this game. They have a very nice variety. Um, some old returning favorites, some new ones that are crazy awesome. Um, in general, they just are generally good to find. There's also some secret ones that aren't that are in uh, more hidden sort of areas, so that's also pretty cool. Um, but we actually have to get all the attack pieces in this area because we're going to start introduction to uh, special attacks. They usually introduce you to you know special attacks of some sort. So um, we'll find most of them in this area right here. They're just sort of lying about. Um, later on, they'll be a bit more tricky to find. Um, even in the next area, like you know, they try to hide them a bit better. Like you know, they're not impossible to find. But they're, they're, you know, they're, they at least try to hide them, which is a good thing. So um, you have to kind of earn your new attacks in this game. You don't just buy them in a shop this time. Or learn them naturally, because in Superstar Saga, you just learned you know, the attacks naturally, except for the one secret ones. Um, you know, you got them as part of the plot. This one, you actually have to actively go and find attacks in new areas in order to get them, which I think this is a great system. I think the whole attack pieces thing is a really good idea in terms of um, using new special attacks. This, I mean, I think the only ones that you're ma are mandatory to get is this one. And there's one you need to get later for plot reasons, but other than that, um, you you can technically just go out through the game only like you know getting those two special attacks and having no other ones, which you know you can always do a minimalist run and have that happen. That's always you know certainly an option from doing RPGs is doing a minimalist run. So 
I guess that works. But um, just, just to end this episode off, we're going to uh, quickly explain his special attacks and uh, figure out how to use them. Because now we have a new one. We got all ten pieces, and it's going to be a nice classic favorite, Green Shell, taken right from Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. Although, if you want a more accurate description, these ones actually follow closer to the Red Shells from Partners in Time because they can actually um attack enemies in succession as the Red Shells could back then. Um, uh, back in Partners in Time. The green shells can only attack one enemy, and once that enemy was dead, it would be dead. This one, the green shells, can actually move back and forth between different enemies. Well, it'll kill one enemy, but it'll move on to the next one. So, um, basically, you can do, always do a demo of all these special attacks. Another nice uh, um, add-on, actually, is being able to do demos of special attacks and use them and try, to, and try them out on enemies before, you know, you use them in actual battle and get practice with them so you can actually, you know, have a good sense of how to do that. So, uh, in order to use the green shell, you yeah, press A and B, you just alternate. It's um, pretty much how it was in Partners in Time. You know, just A and B back and forth. You don't have any babies to spin on them this time, which is unfortunate, but um, basically, you know, they just work like that. So, they're basically your red shells from Partners in Time. Um, and But, you know, I don't really mind that they're using these special attacks, because the green shell was a very good attack. I mean, it's a very comfortable, standard attack. It wasn't very awkward to use, it was very fun to use, it was very quick to use. Um, it doesn't. This game also doesn't really have that many... Well, I guess they do have some special attacks that take a while, but... I can't think, I don't think there's anything like the chomps were, the, the pocket chomps back in Partners in Time that take forever as well. Most of these attacks are pretty quick and easy, um, although special attacks have another function that will happen later in the game as a bonus function, and which is probably going to be um, the hardest thing for me to do in this game. Um, I'll explain it later, I think actually I'm going to explain next episode what I'm talking about, um, but there's also there's, there's some, um, it pays, let's just say it's going to pay to get really good at special attacks, because later in the game we're going to have a challenge function with special attacks that will, um, uh, you know, see how good you can do these special attacks. So, getting as much practice in as possible, usually a good idea. Um, otherwise, these aren't like a Superstar Saga where you can get, um, you can level up, you know, not even level up, but you can, uh, get advanced commands back to Superstar Saga. No, those are, are, are still not there. So, um, these are just your typical, you know, green shell, just, you know, it stays like this the entire game. You just get new, di new a bunch of different special attacks. There's like 10 or so special attacks. I forget how many there are, but there's a lot of them. Anyway, these elite goombules, goombules, or however you want to call them, um, they just, you have to use the shells to kill them. So they're good practice for that. Um, luckily, if you run out of SP, uh, Star Lowell will heal you. But that's going to be it for this guy, for um, now, guys. This is Lucky70X signing out. In the next episode, we're going to do more tutorials and maybe even get those hammers. So um, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.